The Iranian football team's refusal to sing their national anthem was bigger news than the scoreline in their first match. But they were singing again ahead of their 2-0 win over Wales following alleged pressure from the government. It is just one sign of the huge risks Iranian people are taking to show their dissent at a World Cup increasingly overshadowed by human rights issues. These Iranian fans in the stadium wanted to seize the opportunity and draw attention to the bloody crackdown on protests happening in their home country. But their message, women, life, freedom, was not welcomed by FIFA and Qatar and removed. Just like Iranian flags, altered to hide the symbol of the Islamic Republic. The team's decision to this time sing the national anthem, albeit reluctantly, a sign of the immense pressure the players are under and a humiliation, painful to watch for many in attendance. For others, it's a symbol of giving in to a regime they don't approve of, especially since it comes just a day after their former teammate Volia Rafuri was arrested in Iran after training session with his club Fulat Khuzestan. Rafuri is of Kurdish origin and has repeatedly criticized the oppression of women and minorities in the Islamic Republic. Now he's facing charges for tarnishing the reputation of the national team and spreading propaganda against the state. That makes Refori one of the more than 15,000 people authorities in Iran have arrested since the protest began in September. More than 300 Iranians have been killed, according to human rights groups. And every day security forces attack protesters all over the country. It has created a rift through Iranian society that's also on display in Qatar. Outside the stadium, supporters of the Islamic Republic try to silence anti-government protesters and hide their messages, turning the match itself into a sideshow. And so the Iranian team managed to defeat Wales on the pitch and yet disappointed many of their fans for not standing by them. Iranians are not limiting their protests to stadiums in Qatar. Demonstrations continue in Iran, with several taking place in Tehran and other cities on Saturday. That's according to social media. Activists say security forces opened fire on a crowd gathered in the city of Sahedan in the southeast after Friday prayers. Dozens are feared dead or wounded. In a speech on Saturday, Iran's Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei praised the Basij militia, militia that have been at the heart of the government crackdown. To get more on the story, we're now joined by Yalda Sarbak, head of our DW Persian service. Yalda, good to have you with us. Um, so Khamenei's, or Khamenei's speech came just a, a day after another alleged crackdown in uh, Sahedan and, and also the win of the national team in Qatar. That's uh, quite a, a mixed bag of feelings, joy here, suffering there. How is that perceived in the country? Yes, Monica. Well, it is how it is perceived is that the part of joy that you mentioned, we don't at the moment. Uh, the pictures that we see within Iran are the security forces, are the Revolutionary Guard Corps who are actually um, celebrating the win of the national team, who are um, who are on their tanks uh, from which they ha they've been killing people on the streets, dancing and celebrating. And of course. Um, Many people, as we've seen, uh, the report has shown it very well, um, many Iranians are actually um, frustrated and are turning their backs on the national team because they were expecting them to speak out as many other athletes and also other uh, football players within Iran have been doing. Uh, this change of heart that we've seen uh, now singing along the national anthem, could this have something to do with, uh, we, we saw in this report, a famous Iranian football player getting arrested earlier this week. Uh, why now? Why during the World Cup in Qatar when the whole world is watching? It uh, it has two sides to it. On the one hand, Buria Rafari it has been very outspoken even before. So he was he's he's always been very critique to the criticizing the regime um, for human rights violations for many more. He has been a former player of the national team. Um, he has been a player of the of Tehran Estaglal's team. He has been kicked out for because he has been so outspoken. Um, and now, of course, it is also a signal to the to the team. The national team, a signal of intimidation, kind of showing, you know, 
this could also happen to you if you don't behave um, uh, the way we want uh, in Qatar. But on the other hand, um, we can also see that um, many people at least saying that for being part of the national team, you have to also be a way loyal to the system and to the regime. So uh, that's why also people like Ruya Rafari are not taking part there. Right. Right. And Yalda, just briefly, if you would, uh, because we are seeing that more and more protest symbols against the Iranian regime are now banned from the stadiums in Qatar. Uh, is everybody there being silenced now? Um, this is very crucial, what we're witnessing right now in Qatar, because on the one hand, the Iranian regime is, is mobilizing his people and supporters to go to, uh, to go to support the team, to give interviews, to, you know, to show the world how uh, how uh, w women are treated equally in Iran and have the same rights, for instance. And on the other hand, um, we are Qatar is helping to silence um, protesters to enter with the with banners women life freedom even with t-shirts uh, where it says women life freedom on it and we know about Iranian journalists actually who were before the before the World Cup would start who were getting threats by the Iranian intelligence um, that if you will come to Qatar to uh, report um, you will be facing us, kind of showing that uh, also the relation and the support of Qatar with the uh, Iranian regime. And we have also Iranian journalists right now uh, in Doha trying to raise these questions and being silenced when they ask about uh, Buria Rafari when they asked their the national team. Um, we have state reporters from Iranian television, right. uh, Europe, who are then protesting against uh, reporters who are trying to raise these questions. All right, Yalda Sarbakshe, head of our DW Persian service. Thank you so much, Yalda.